I'm here at the Aspen Ideas Festival this morning and join us right now for a look at the state of the economy, the Fed's rate path, and so much more. We're going to get into politics, actually, as well. David Rubenstein, co-founder and co-chairman of the Carlaw Group. He's also now the owner of uh, Major League Baseball's Baltimore Orioles. We'll talk to him about baseball. But actually, let's start where you just we were just talking off camera. You just did an interview with uh, President Biden and former President Trump. And we've been having conversations all morning, both with Joe Lonsdale, who I believe is supporting President Trump. We also took to uh, Jeff Sonnenfeld, who had that piece uh, in The New York Times yesterday about CEOs um, and what he believes is not their support uh, for, for Trump. What was your lesson uh, from interviewing both of these gentlemen recently? It's a book that I have coming out in September. And I have said that the highest calling of mankind is private equity. But I decided to actually call this book the highest calling because probably being president is more important than private equity. So the book is called The Highest Calling, and for that, it's a book about various presidents. But the last two, I have interviewed them. I spent an hour with uh, President Biden in the Oval Office, and then I spent uh, about an hour with okay, President Okay, but what, what was the revelation for you personally, then? Uh, I think the characterization of both of them is not accurate. Accurate. I mean, uh, President Biden could do the interview quite well. I mean, he answered every question, and uh, the, the interview will be public. Uh, and President Trump was, during the trial that he was doing this, he did it before the trial one morning, and um, he seemed to be focused on it. And so uh, there's no right. revelations that I think are startling. You, you've been a, a Democrat for most of your life. I'm an independent now. You're an independent now. OK. Yes. Do, you, do you want to tell us who you plan to support? I don't get involved in politics. Uh, but anymore. you're but you're but you're you're a demonstrable friend of the of the current president. I mean, he stayed at your house. I, I, I he does stay at my house, but I friends with a lot of people. But would you therefore not support him? I don't support anybody publicly. I just vote the way I want to vote privately. But I, I, because I'm the chairman of the Kennedy Center, the chairman of the Library of Congress, chairman of the National Gallery of Art, I think it's best for me to be apolitical because I have to get money from Democrats and Republicans for the appropriations for the Kennedy Center. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get in the middle so of it. So then let me ask you this, though. What do you make of the Jeff Sonnenfeld piece in The New York Times yesterday that effectively was saying uh, that he didn't believe that the presidents of major companies in America were going to support President Trump? Uh, we then had an interview with Joe Lonsdale, who made the argument that he believes that there is a quiet support for President Trump, but it's actually much larger than is uh, appreciated or known. I think that uh, CEOs generally want to be with a winner. As a general rule of thumb, most CEOs of big publicly traded companies are probably more Republican than Democratic, as a general rule of thumb. And generally, they have had some resistance to President Trump for all the reasons you know. But now that they think that President Trump has a reasonably good chance of winning based on public opinion right. polls, I think they're drifting and coming home. How, how should we think about that, though? Well, I mean, business people generally like to be with a winner. They want to do what's going to help their company, and they think their company might be helped by some of the policies of Trump, rightly or wrongly. Um, let's uh, switch for a moment to, uh, to business, if we could. Here we are on sure. CNBC. Uh, we just talked to Austin Goolsby about uh, the path of the Fed. You're in the private equity business. Uh, the path of the Fed has a huge impact on your yes. ability to borrow money and how much you pay for it. Where do you think we really are? Well, I think the Federal Reserve is very reluctant. I don't know for sure what they're going to do. Nobody knows for certain. I'm going to interview Jay Powell uh, publicly on July the 15th in a public setting in, in Washington, and maybe he'll give us some insights then. But I think that generally the Fed wants to stay out of politics. And so I've always said that I think the Fed is not likely to cut rates before the election because it would just cause too much political turmoil. So you don't believe Austin Goolsby at the end of that interview uh, when I believe uh, he was asked specifically whether the presidential race has an impact on their decision. I know that that is the traditional line that the Fed has, and they should have that line. But I just think generally they're human and they recognize that they'll be heavily criticized by President Trump, I suspect, if all of a sudden they were to cut rates right before the election. Therefore, I suspect the market is probably more right than wrong when it says right. the rates cuts are likely to come after the election. Let me actually ask you just a, a Washington political question about the Fed. You know, the Fed has talked about its independence for a long time. And yet when you go back, even in the Volcker days and, and, and other times, there's been some pressure applied uh, by presidents, uh, sometimes very quietly, uh, increasingly when it was former President Trump. Uh, publicly, we've heard from, uh, we've seen that Heritage 2025 report and others right. that have suggested uh, that uh, if he were president, at least some people uh, that are around him uh, want to have a lot more control of the Fed. Do you think that's in the cards? I think that's unrealistic because I think trying to control the Fed now, uh, given the way the country's evolved and, and the history of the Fed, 
would be damaging to the economy, and I don't think that would actually happen. I don't believe Republicans or Democrats on Capitol Hill would really support that in the end, and I think the American people wouldn't Thanks. support that. The Fed has operated as the best uh, central bank in the world for a long time, and I think uh, destroying that would be a big mistake. How would you grade this economy today? I think the economy now is probably a B plus. Uh, we're not A, but nobody's probably an A right in the world right now. But we're doing pretty well. Remember, we've had high interest rates for quite some time, yet the economy is going to grow probably at 2.5% this year. That's pretty good for an economy with high interest rates. We've been predicting a recession for quite some time, 23, 24. It hasn't happened yet. Right. So the economy is in pretty good shape. You have been a prolific fundraiser uh, beyond uh, some of the not-for-profit work you did, but a prolific fundraiser at Carlisle uh, from pension funds and sovereign wealth funds around the world. Right. There is a... A conundrum that is taking place in private equity today, which is that there have been very few exits, meaning that private equity has sold very few companies. A lot of pension funds have not gotten cash back, which means that you can't really go to them and say, hey, send me more money because they say, I don't have money. You need to send me the money. A lot of folks have then gone to the Middle East to say, OK, we'll, we'll go after that money. Right. Now in the Middle East, it appears they're saying, actually, you know what? We were sending you a lot of money. We need to spend some of that money uh, here in the Middle East instead of back in America. As a fundraiser, what do you think of what's happening here? Well, it's obviously tougher to raise money than it was years ago because we haven't had as many exits. But there's a new thing called private credit. Yes. And many people have been raising money in private credit. And there's a fair amount of money for that because interest rates have been high. So most of the large private equity firms also are doing large amounts of private credit. And so they've been raising money for that. And there are other things they raise money for, real estate, fund to funds. So the large private equity firms are not suffering. Um, they could always do better. But I think you shouldn't cry for them. How do you think about the marks, though, on all these private equity investments? Because they have gone up and up and up and up. And yet we haven't seen the realized sale of them yet? Well, historically, uh, when you raise money, you worried about the internal rate of return that you had and also the um, MOEC, the multiple and invested capital. Now the investors want something called DPI, which is to say, how much cash have you actually given me back? Don't tell me what the mark is or what it's going to be. Tell me what right. cash you're giving back. And so that's made it more difficult to raise money. But generally, um, I think that as the economy gets better, and it will get better because when interest rates come down, I suspect you'll see a loosening up of, right. of asset sales and more and more things will get sold. What do you think of this new phenomenon where some private equity firms effectively are leveraging the leverage, meaning they're basically to get some cash out to give to people, they're effectively taking a loan on top of the loan? Uh, these are continuation funds or yes. things like that. Um, I don't think it's any, any calamity has yet happened because of it. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I, I, we've done it. Other firms have done it. I think it's not a terrible thing. I don't see any big uh, crisis that have happened because of it. Any big investment theme that we need to know about before we let you go? Well, I think uh, sports. Sports. Let's talk about this. How do you feel? How do you feel as an owner of the Orioles now? Well, I had, now, a, had a bunch of losses and some wins, including against the Yankees. We won the Yankees. We beat the Yankees two out of three recently and uh, at five out of seven so far this year. So we just lost three games to the Houston Astros, which in a row, which we didn't anticipate, of course. Um, sports is a, is a very attractive area to invest, as you know. A lot of private equity people have gotten into sports, right. and very few people have lost money buying sports teams. How much of this is an investment for you, and how much of this is just supposed to be fun? This is mostly a philanthropic thing in the sense that I want to make money, and I have investors that have come along with me, but I am from Baltimore. I grew up right. in Baltimore, and I wanted to do something for Baltimore, and that's really why I did it.